It's um, an interesting career. Um, I would suppose that all young people uh, spend their first few years in uh, learning a lot because you deal with regulatory issues, you deal with uh, developmental issues and uh, the canvas is so wide that uh, uh, there is no uh, one person who has the experience of all this. So you keep absorbing things as you go along. You understand that um, the very diverse nature of Indian society. But more importantly in the service, what you understand is how different institutions work, uh, what are their uh, interrelationships. And uh, because the country is uh, diverse by nature, how to um, achieve whatever you have set out to achieve. Uh, despite the fact that there will always be opinions to the contrary, there will be hundred views on the same subject, but at the end of the day, as a decision maker, you got to choose one after weighing the pros and cons. I got some uh, interesting experience while in Maharashtra because I was also given the charge of analyzing the capital budgets of the public sector undertakings. So some peep into how uh, these undertakings work and what are their difficulties, what are their demands and to what extent can the state satisfy those demands it was interesting. In Government of India, in the Petroleum Ministry, this was uh, 1984 and India had just started opening up because uh, Mr. Rajiv Gandhi had taken over as the Prime Minister and there was a wave of liberalization at that time. So I got the very interesting opportunity of uh, uh, helping in the policy formulation for offering our blocks uh, to foreign oil companies to come and explore. And that opening up process was very interesting. The resistance from the uh, PSUs, the resistance from within the bureaucracy, then some ideological issues, whether the multinationals were going to come and exploit us and how do we create uh, enough checks and balances there. So it was a kind of um, uh, uh, need to understand um, across sections uh, the different issues that were involved. My going there was uh, more a matter of uh, chance and luck and that plays a big role in life. Uh, Mr. Ramakrishna who was uh, secretary in petroleum ministry, he went on to um, SEBI as a SEBI chairman even before it got statutory authority. So he asked me to come over to SEBI and uh, since I had an excellent working relationship with him. I went over to SEBI. The difficulty that SEBI had uh, at that time, the main difficulty I would say is that we had in the country people who, were, who knew what regulation was. So you had the RBI, you had the government regulating various sectors, so you had regulatory experience. We had people who had a good knowledge of what capital market was. So they were in stock exchanges, they were with merchant bankers, some mutual fund industry was coming up at that time, so some fledgling experience of mutual funds. But we didn't have the combination of the two. So SEBI perforce had to recruit some people from RBI, from banks, from uh, uh, the government uh, with the idea that these people had regulatory experience. And then it had to take people from commercial banks, from the stock exchanges and so on because they had experience of financial markets and we had to marry the two. The first focus that uh, Mr. Ramakrishna gave to uh, uh, the central theme of the SEBI Act that it is for investor protection. So listen to the investors, uh, ask them what their difficulties are and that might lead you to uh, the answer to the question of what reform is needed in the market. And the second uh, principle that he laid down there was of transparency because uh, now it seems like commonplace, but at that time SEBI was among the few institutions which used to put out its thought process in the public domain. That we want to make these changes in these rules or we want to have new rules or whatever and we want to know what the market reaction is. And that has served SEBI in good stead. Having been in civil service for a considerable period of time uh, and having done whatever postings I did, I had uh, one or two questions to which I didn't have clear answers. Uh, uh, 
Uh, one question was uh, that my experience was in a more secure environment. And uh, in government, you are uh, given a department, there have been things going on there, you go there and try to make some difference. But you don't create anything. So do I have the ability, if somebody gave me a budget, to implement a project and make a difference? I didn't have an answer to that. I also used to think that um, does the assurance of a 35-year tenure uh, in any way stunt to your development? I didn't have an answer to that because living inside you can't find an answer to that. So I said, suppose I were to throw off this security cover, what will happen to me? Will I still be able to work, deliver? In a sense, NSDL was a real uh, opportunity <laughs> coming from heaven where all these things were coming together. And uh, add to that the fact that uh, I had worked for four years in SEBI, so there was the domain knowledge. So there was the understanding of what the problem was. It was a technological project. It was an opportunity to see for myself what happens if I am thrown to the wolves. One of the uh, important things that we learned is that it's uh, very interesting to work with young people because there is no constraint on ideas and they are not bound by hierarchical positions. So many times a young person, um, girl or a boy will come and tell you things that your senior manager or your uh, executives will not tell you because they are very conscious of hierarchy. They want to first know what you think before they say what they want to say and also uh, uh, young people are a good uh, source of energy and they are a good source of new ideas. What, they, what you need to do as a more experienced person is to uh, make those ideas more practical. I think the second lesson we learned, and this was a bit of a worry for us, that time uh, IT was in full bloom and salaries were skyrocketing and so was financial sector in full bloom. And we were going to draw people from the financial sector and IT. And there was no way a fledgling institution like us was going to be able to pay market-related salaries. So we were worried that we will get only second-rate talent. And uh, we realized in about a year or two years of implementation that uh, in people's lives, salary is not everything. Even though a lot of people think that with money they can buy any talent, I think that's not true. Uh, talent also needs the satisfaction that something worthwhile is being done. And uh, they will do those things for you at a much lesser salary if you are able to get this across to them that you're doing something worthwhile. We live in this society. We draw from the sources, resources of this society. So we need to give back. So never let your vision be blinded by the well-off and the well-to-do alone. Be constantly conscious of the fact that there is this part of the society and automatically you will be impelled to do something for them. So never let that thing, and I'm sure it exists in everybody's mind. So it's not as if people are born without that uh, feeling, that empathy. It's just a matter of keeping it alive. We sometimes blind ourselves to it. So I would say that uh, that should be kept alive. I think um, young people by nature are uh, less risk averse. And we must utilize this uh, in a positive manner. So while making them aware of the fact that you can't just jump off a cliff without thinking, but you need to make jumps that are a little risky, but still there is reward at the end of it if you do make a jump. The second thing, uh, which is again related to this whole question of whether compensation alone determines things, I think young minds are open to the idea that this is the time I need to learn and strengthen myself so that I can do bigger things in life. And uh, we need to inculcate that sense in people that you know, learning is more important at this stage.